Today we're going to try and answer that age-old question. Can you do a four-camera production with streaming, recording, and multi-cording on a tablet? And more importantly, should you? Stick around to find out. G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here, and today I'll be trying to do a four-camera production on a tablet. Sure, you can probably get away with doing a single cam production on your Surface Pro, but is there a device where you could realistically do four cameras on a tablet? So firstly, I'll just clear this up by saying that I'm not a huge fan of tablets. I much prefer the form factor and functionality of a laptop. I like a big bright screen, a functional keyboard, a number pad, and a whole lot of ports that I can plug whatever I want into. And like everybody else, I'm also a big fan of being able to close it like a clam and making that shunk sound and then chucking it in my bag. However, what I'm not a huge fan of is lugging around a heavy laptop when we travel for our trade shows. Sometimes we travel 30 to 40 hours just to get somewhere and it's a bit of a pain having to lug around a heavy laptop. So although I don't like tablets, I thought I would try and find one that was actually light enough to travel with and actually capable of running vMix. So when we do trade shows, sometimes people like to steal our equipment. So we do need to have a backup laptop and we usually use our travel ones in case we need it for a live stream, using it in the show or perhaps with a vMix call. So I set out to try and find one and I stumbled across the ASUS ROG Flow Z13. And yes, I'm going to be saying Z because that's what we say in Australia. Now it's a 1.1 kilogram tablet that's running an i9 12900H processor and a 3050 Ti GPU. Now Martin said that I could buy one if I could make good use of it and if I could make additional content with it because it was just so expensive for what it is. So Martin, here's your video. The Flow Z13 comes with Thunderbolt 4 and so that means that you can add multiple HD cameras to the tablet if you've got a Thunderbolt enclosure or a capture device. Now because it has an i9 CPU and a 3000 series GPU, you can actually squeeze a fair bit of juice out of the turnip for your video productions. ASUS also have a proprietary PCIe eGPU enclosure called the XG Mobile, which allows you to connect a much bigger mobile GPU up to a 3080. However, that extra device is an additional $1,600 Australian, and because vMix doesn't support eGPUs, we don't even know whether it would work with that sort of connection, and uh, well, I wasn't really allowed to spend any more money on this device, so I didn't get one. Now to me it also kind of defeats the purpose of having a tablet to have an additional thing that's kind of almost more than half the size of the tablet itself just to have a bigger graphics card. Why not just buy a laptop for half the price of both of those combined and you don't need to lug around an extra thing with your tablet. So I decided to get the Z13 and when I brought it back to the office I plugged it in with the only port that I could see that I could power it up with and so I was wondering how was I supposed to get anything else into it. So I went around and had a look and there was a rubber connector cover down here. So I took that off and that's where you plug in that external enclosure. However, there's also a USB-C connector here for 3.2 USB. So I figured, well, I may as well plug the power into that so I can use the other one for Thunderbolt. So I grabbed my trusty USB-C power meter and just tested the power throughput on both that Thunderbolt and the 3.2 port and it was getting the same power draw so I knew that I was going to be okay. So definitely with any sort of tablet and laptop, if you've got one, always plug it directly into power. So I grabbed a Thunderbolt enclosure that we had and I dropped a Elgato CamLink Pro capture card into it, meaning that I could get four full HD HDMI cameras into this production right here. Now if you check out above me here, this is our tutorial PC that we run all of our vMix tutorials and recordings off and that's not on. Everything is running through the Z13 today. So what I'm doing, I've got four cameras here. I've got one, two, three, four. And I also have an NDI camera here. I have a title and I have some video files down at the bottom here. Now you notice that I'm recording. I'm doing a dual record of the program output and I'm doing a vMix AVI record of the desktop. And then I've got a stream, 1080, 4.5 megabit going out. And I also have a multi-corder for all four of these cameras along here that I am recording as well so I can make the tutorial. So let's check out some of the statistics. Um, we have good render time down here, GPU mems barely touched, uh, CPU and vMix and total is looking pretty good. Now we'll check out the statistics. Now I'm gonna use my mouse here because I can't quite press that. And we have no drop frames or anything here on the capture devices. So that's awesome and exactly what we want. All right, so I suppose that does answer that age-old question of whether you can do a four-cam production on a tablet. 
Yes, I suppose you can. More importantly though, should you? Well, this device doesn't quite meet the standards that we have for a laptop in regards to the GPU, as we do recommend a 3060. In fact, the 3050 Ti Max-Q that's in this isn't even quite as good as the previously recommended laptops that have 1660 Ti's in them. In saying that though, the 3000 series do give you resizable bar, which is pretty impressive and kind of gives you a little bit of leeway in certain areas. The i9 itself is obviously very capable and really helps out when you are not using the encoder for some additional recordings and NDI and that type of thing. And the fact that it's an i9 kind of balances out the lower GPU kind of in, in certain instances. So it really depends on what you're doing. So overall, I was actually surprised how much power that they packed into a tablet uh, and what you could do with it, it's pretty crazy. In saying that though, this is pretty much the only sort of specific gaming tablet that there is in the market. So I'm not sure how much they're gonna support this model in the future. Uh, again, I'm not sure about the longevity as well, like constantly using this for crazy video productions, how long it's gonna hold up, whether you're gonna fry it or you know, who knows how long it would last for. So probably my biggest problem with the device is the sheer lack of extra USB ports. So if you wanted to add a stream deck and X keys or an adapter of some kind, you've just got the one port to do it. And yes, it is only USB 2.0. So you couldn't even add a webcam or you couldn't add a USB dongle to it if you wanted to. So that is an absolute massive pain. And of course, I'm using a Bluetooth mouse as well to connect to it instead of using the trackpad, which again is problematic as well. I'd probably have prefer to have a wired mouse as well, but I can't really do that. Now you don't get any additional display outputs as well. You can run display port out of a Thunderbolt to a device and then send that out via display port to a monitor. I tried that with mine, it worked, but I was still getting some issues with some slight um, tearing and that sort of thing. So it probably isn't going to work the best with that. Again, you only get one of these flimsy sort of keyboards here. Um, you don't get like a full size keyboard with a number pad and all that kind of stuff as well. Finally, touch screens. Do you like touchscreens? If you do, then this is really good, but it can also be a little bit of a negative. So it's really easy if you wanna switch cameras, uh, you know, you wanna do transitions and all that kind of stuff. It's really easy to do that. However, I have moderately sized hands. So sometimes when you grab things or press things, you accidentally open up the settings or you close things down or you know, you do things that you don't mean to do and then you can't get it back and now I'm stuck and I don't know what to do. So there we go. Now we're back. So yeah, a little bit problematic for me uh, with the touch screen, but some people do really like being able to, to have a touch screen. Now, obviously pricing changes all the time, but currently in Australia, I could buy say an i7 Asus Tough Laptop, which has Thunderbolt 4, it has a 3060 GPU uh, for about a thousand bucks less Australian than this tablet. And it also has obviously a 16 inch monitor, full keyboard, number pad, heaps of USB 3 ports as well. So this tablet and the laptops I were talking about do have Thunderbolt, whereas you can get very, very cheap USB based laptops if you were gonna use USB capture. So for example, you could have a 15 inch laptop that's like $1,700 cheaper than this tablet here, say like a Gigabyte A5 that has a Ryzen 7 and a 3060. So you just be using NDI or USB capture for your inputs instead of using Thunderbolt and you can save a whole lot of money. So Martin, was that all right? Have I fulfilled my contractual obligation to be able to continue to use this tablet? Yes, absolutely. You found the loophole. So the Flow Z13 is a pretty cool and powerful device, but it's not exactly practical or affordable for live production, I don't think. It does, however, show you how far computers have come along. I mean, this is about the size of an old school netbook, but you can do a multi-cam live stream on it with recording and multi-quarter. You can imagine going back 10 years and showing this to us and it would have kind of blown people's minds. It also shows you what you can do with vMix as well. Like it's pretty crazy that you can kind of do a multicam production on a tablet. If they could cram a 3060 and some more USB ports into this thing, it would be totally amazing and I would totally use it more often. Now I will say that you also look pretty rad if you're using one. If you show up with a tablet to a live production, a multi-cam live production with a tablet, and uh, I think people would find that pretty amazing. It would be hilarious to me anyway. Um, let me know if you're using a tablet in your productions uh, in the comments, and I'd be interested to hear how they're going and what people's reactions are. So for more information about laptops that we actually recommend, you can check out our supported hardware page on vmix.com. And if you can't find the specific laptops on that page, just match up the recommended specs of the laptop. And typically we might be a generation behind, say with the CPU, because we haven't bought new ones yet. Usually the new gen CPUs work better 
or just as good as the previous one. So you can get those. Now, if you are looking for a new laptop and you're not quite sure, you can send us through an email with the specs of that laptop and the model number, and we can take a look at it and let you know before you actually buy it. So thanks for watching and we will stream you later.